Oh, once again, get a call. Hello, how can I help you? This is Adrian. Hey, I need help marketing my online flip-flop business. Can you do that for me? I heard you were really good. I'd love to help you with that. What's your marketing budget? Oh, I, I don't have a marketing budget. I need to have a marketing budget? Oh yeah, if you're an online business or any kind of business, you definitely need to have a marketing budget. Every business should have one, just like you have a personal budget for your everyday life. Without a budget, how can you know how to grow? How are you gonna be able to scale up? Oh yeah, I see, I, I have a personal budget, so I need a business budget. Okay, my budget is a $100, is that okay? Well, Mr. Customer, it's actually a little bit more complicated than that. It's really important to understand what your budget is, but if you got $100, that's not really gonna work for me. What I would recommend is maybe you go buy a set of business cards, get a nice design done by a designer somewhere, and just start going out there and utilizing that 100 bucks. But uh, yeah, $100 is a, is a good start. I'm glad you've actually identified one, uh, but you definitely need to spend a little bit more time figuring out why your budget is $100, because maybe it needs to be $200 or $500. Really important. $200, yeah, I did that. Yeah, like I said, it's more specific than that. You really need to have your numbers down. Uh, why don't I walk you through the process and help you? Are you on YouTube? Yeah, I love YouTube. My favorite YouTubers are on there. I watch videos all the time. Well, okay, so this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make a video just for you, sir. Why don't you go check out my channel? It's Adrian Graphics, and we'll go ahead and I'll explain how it all works. Thank you, I appreciate it. I can't wait, I'm gonna check it out right now. Well, just give me a few minutes. I'm gonna record it right now. It'll take a little bit to upload, but definitely check it out either tonight or first thing tomorrow morning. I hope you have a great night. Take care. What's up everybody? My name is Adrian Boisel. Thank you for joining me for another Adrian Graphics and Marketing video. I'm stoked to be here with you. My little funny skits I like to do in the beginning, I'm trying to get better and better at them and practicing. I just love to have fun and that's one of my signature little characters that I do when I'm really uh, struggling to figure something out technology wise. And I know there's a lot of people that feel that way when they're doing marketing and starting to run their business. And so I help a ton of small businesses and a lot of them give me the same answer when I ask them that question. The million dollar question, what is your marketing budget? Do you have one? If you don't have one, you're really missing out and you're hurting your own business. Even in your personal life, you need to have a budget. You probably don't go throughout your day-to-day -day life without having some sort of a budget and knowing, okay, I can't go spend $500 on a new PS4 or I can't go spend $1,000 on a new toy or I can't go buy a $5,000 watch. There are budgets that you have, in, even if they're not on paper, that are in your mind. It's no different than your business. You need to budget your, your expenses for the business expenses that you have, but you also need to budget your marketing. A marketing budget is absolutely essential to growth. A lot of people refer on all of their business growth to come from just referrals. Well, in my opinion, that is not a sustainable model and it's not a scalable model. You can use those growth hacking techniques if you're a marketer, you know what I'm talking about, to help stimulate referrals, to add in more revenue, but you need to have a marketing budget. And honestly, you should be paying those people that are sending you referrals. It's the same thing that I do and they're taking a risk on you and not all the time, not 100% of the time are the relationships going to work out. So it could blow back on them and they should be compensated for that, don't you think? It's kind of the fair thing to do. So regardless, even if you're getting referrals, you need to have some sort of a budget where you say, hey, if somebody gives me a referral, I'm gonna give them 20 bucks or 25 bucks or I'm gonna send them a gift card. That's still a budget, but you need to lay that out and set that up up front so you don't set yourself up for, for failure in the long term, okay? And there are three types of budgets. Not only do you do referrals, you also have offline marketing budget and you have your online marketing budget. Your offline marketing budget could be your printed materials, could be going to trade shows, could be going to events, could be uh, networking events, all of these different areas that you could be putting your marketing dollars into. You getting in front of a room of people, small groups, one-on-one, -on -one, whatever that is, is an opportunity for you to market your business, okay? Offline, okay? And then you have online business marketing, which is typically what we do the most of. I do a lot of offline as well. You've seen some of my pictures and some of my videos of me on stage. That is a really great way to drive in business. But for this video, I really wanted to focus more on the online marketing budget and how you should be dividing that up. Now there's a bunch of things about online marketing that you need to understand. 
okay? You're gonna have a branding campaign to help you really stay top of mind and reach awareness. So you can use email marketing to just constantly be sending emails. And I, when I say constantly, you don't wanna bug them and, and send them emails every day or twice a day. I'm talking two to three times a week, you can send emails and there's gonna be a cost for that email marketing software. There's gonna be a cost for pay-per-click advertising. There's gonna be a cost for lead generation. There's gonna be a cost for SEO. You're gonna have a cost if you really wanted to dive into SEO, you're gonna have a cost for links. You're gonna have a cost for blog articles and for content writing uh, and for all the different things that you're gonna to need to do to generate leads from search engine optimization. So you need to be able to understand how much you should put towards that. So I can give you a simple methodology today, and that's what this video is about, is understanding your marketing budget, but also understanding how to break that process down. Now I understand for everybody that this isn't, this isn't the same, but this is a process that I've developed over the years that has helped me understand for my clients what the marketing budget should be. All right, so let's go ahead and jump right into it. Oh, man, all right. So in order for you to have a great marketing budget for your business, it's really important that you understand what a customer is worth to you. In order to understand that, you have to know what you're charging that customer. So we're gonna use an example company for this uh, demonstration, but I'm just gonna pick a septic company. I've used this before in other examples, but you have a septic client, okay? And let's just say you sell septic equipment. That's all you do. That's your main business. You sell septic equipment, okay? When you sell septic equipment, the average home is gonna be three to four bedrooms. So you're gonna make about $1,000 a bedroom is what you're actually gonna charge. And then out of that, you're probably gonna have like a 50% margin. So if you have $1,000 a bedroom and you have a three bedroom house, you're gonna have $3,000, okay? Then you're going to divide that in half, divide that by two, and that's gonna give you $1,500, okay? Now that is your actual value of that client because the chances of them purchasing from you again is probably zero to none. They're probably not gonna need you again, especially since these septic systems don't fail, right? So you got a whole lifetime value for this customer since there's only one sale of 1500 bucks. Now there's other ways to add to that value like doing engineering and doing installation, but this for now, we'll just use as a great example. Okay, you got 1500 bucks. Now, if you're going to have a marketing budget of 10%, which is typically what I say to my clients is what they should have, that's $150 is what you're gonna be willing to spend to acquire a new customer, okay? So if you're gonna have a marketing budget of 10%, you got $150 to acquire customers, how many customers do you need in a month to pay your bills? Well, I'm guessing after you submit, subtract that, you got $1,350. You gotta understand, and I usually work backwards in this, but you gotta understand what your sales goal is. So if we were to do the math, and I'm not the greatest mathematician by any means, but if we were to do the math and I were to pull this up, Let's just say I needed to make $20,000 a month. I'm gonna divide that by 1350. That means I need 14 sales to make $20,000 a month. Now obviously I have taxes and other things that are gonna come out of that, but that's, that's gonna be what I need to make to generate $20,000 a month in profit, okay? So I need 14 sales, okay? So now you got 150 times 14, 150 times 14, that means your marketing budget every single month should be $2,100, okay? Now, however you go about using that budget, that is a realistic number if you're gonna start out at 20% or 10%. If you're gonna go to 20% and you wanna be really aggressive, which is something that I do, then you're gonna double that. Now your customer acquisition cost is $3 or $300 and your total budget's gonna be about $4,000. That is really aggressive. I have friends and people that are in the industry that I'm in that spend anywhere between 30 and 40% because their reoccurring revenue is, is, is there and with digital marketing and graphic design and other industries where you can make passive income, like doing hosting and things like that for people, the lifetime value is a lot higher. It's not as limited. You're not just getting one sale. So depending on your business model, this lifetime, this marketing budget can go up. But this is a great baseline. I would always recommend spending no less than 10% to acquire new business, to bring on new customers, and to have your marketing budget. That is a very, very important number. So you need to understand this equation first, what your customer lifetime value is. Let's just use one more as a quick example. I'm gonna run through this quick because I don't wanna take a lot of your time. But let's just use a carpet cleaner as an example, okay? You have a carpet cleaner and that average job for a carpet cleaner, if you're a good carpet cleaner, is $400, okay? 
Now you're gonna deal with that customer at least once a year. Now, if you do a great job with your marketing and you educate and you stay top of mind and you put out offers and you do, do good deals and you really educate them on the value of getting their carpet clean more than once a year and you get them to just do it one more time per year, now that $400 profit that you just you got on that customer now becomes $800. So your lifetime value in one year is $800. Now, if you can get them to stay loyal to you and keep top of mind, you got a good system in place, things like that, and you get them to use you twice or three times for two to three years, now it goes to, from $800 to $1,600 to $2,400. So now you can see it starts to really increase the lifetime value, the LTV of that customer. So let's just say you have a $2,400. You get your average customer stays with you for three years. If you were to look at all the customers you've had for the lifespan of your business, you think your customers are gonna stay with you for at least three years. Now you got $2,400 and you're gonna spend 10% of that, 10% on your marketing budget. So that leaves you with $240, okay? So $240 is what your average, okay? Uh, what your average customer acquisition cost is gonna be, right? and then you're, you're willing to spend that to acquire that customer. Now you're gonna multiply that by how many customers you need. With carpet cleaning, you're probably gonna need 50 at least, and 100 is probably more realistic. So 100 customers a month, if you wanna stay busy, because you're not gonna get all of that $2,400 up front. But you gotta think about the long term when you're doing your marketing, okay? It's really, really important to think about the long term. So you got $100, you're gonna spend 240. Let's just pull up my phone. You're gonna spend $240 and you're gonna multiply that by 100 customers. It's pretty easy math. That's $24,000 to get 100 customers. Now, obviously that's not a really a realistic number for a carpet cleaner right out of the gate. You should probably be going off of this first initial sale. So you're gonna be paying, instead of uh, $800, we're gonna drop this back down to $400, right? And you're gonna have a $40 customer acquisition cost. That's actually more realistic for a carpet cleaner. And it, with Google advertising and pay-per-click and Facebook ads, you should be able to do that. That's what you should be willing to pay. So if you need 100 customers, that's $4,000. So again, anywhere between two and $5,000 for a new company that wants to bring in a decent amount of business is a very fair marketing budget. If you're paying less than that or you don't have a marketing budget, you need to get one right away. It's very important that you have a marketing budget. If you couldn't tell, these numbers don't lie. It's, it's just an important part of growing and being able to scale. Once you have those numbers dialed in, then it's just, okay, how many customers do I want this month? If I want 200 customers, okay, I'm gonna spend eight grand. If I want 400 customers, okay, I'm gonna spend 16 grand, right? You just do the numbers and you scale it up from there. And the beautiful part is, is the more money you spend, the more traction you get and the cheaper that cost gets because you can start diversifying your money, which I'm gonna talk about in another video between paid ads and organic ads and Facebook ads and pay-per-click on Google. So there's lots of different ways to go about it. That's what I help my clients do. But I wanted you to understand that you need to have a marketing budget. It's super important that you set that standard, that you set that benchmark. I'm saying, hey, I'm gonna spend at least $1,000 a month, even on a bad month. And on the good months, I'm gonna spend as much as I possibly can. Okay, my brother, he's a, he has a general contracting company. He spent $15,000 last month on, on paid advertising alone. And through that, he generated $750,000 in revenue. Okay, what would that be worth to you? If you were to, if you had fifteen thousand dollars in the bank, and I could show you a process where you could invest that fifteen thousand dollars in ads and generate almost a million dollars in sales, even with a low margin of 20, 30 percent, like contractors typically have, if they're really good and they're giving fair prices, that's still a, a ridiculous amount of profit. You're making a huge gain on that, and you could just do that month after month after month. So that's what I got for you today. I know it's pretty detailed, so you may want to watch the video twice, but please hit the subscribe, hit the like, share this with a friend. Thank you guys for tuning in. Again, I'm Adrian Boysell, and as always, keep looking up.